Welcome on this snowy morning. I hope everybody was able to weather the storm without any difficulty. Although it is bright and beautiful out and the storm has passed, we thought it best to cancel services this morning. As many of us are still probably contemplating whether to go outside and shovel and do all those other fun things associated with snowstorms. So if you're contemplating or sipping hot chocolate or coffee, we welcome you to the celebration of the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Our service this morning will be the Liturgy of the Word. If you would like to follow along and you don't have a prayer book, you can go to bcponline.org, click on the Holy Eucharist Rite 2, and that will bring you to the Liturgy of the Word. Our service begins on page 355 in the prayer book, and if you are a member of St. James or of All Saints, a bulletin is sent out to you this, uh, this little while ago. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time, Grant us your peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6, which can be found on page 683 of the prayer book. Again, Psalm 71, verses 1 through 6, which can be found on page 683 of the prayer book. We will say the psalm together in unison. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you.
Our second reading this morning is a reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these, is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Our reading from the fourth chapter of Luke's Gospel beginning at the 21st verse. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the most, if not the most well-known passages in Paul's letters is his praise of love in chapter 13 of his first letter to the Corinthians. It is, of course, a favorite wedding reading, and I'm sure you are all very familiar with it. However, not to discount its use at weddings by any means. Paul is not speaking here of romantic love. Although what Paul is saying 
still makes this a very appropriate passage for services of holy matrimony. To fully appreciate and understand what Paul is trying to impart about love, we must look to the community to which he is writing. With the exception of Antioch, Corinth was the first major city in the Roman Empire that Paul visited and where he first preached the gospel. For 18 months, he organized and taught in many house assemblies in Corinth. These assemblies would periodically come together as a whole assembly, a church, to celebrate the Lord's Supper. After Paul left Corinth, deep divisions started to occur within this fledgling church as it tried to faithfully follow the gospel and Paul's teachings while living in the larger Roman imperial and polytheistic society. There were a number of letters between Paul and the Corinthian church, not all of which have survived. First, First Corinthians, which Paul dictated while in Ephesus, seeks among other things to address and help heal these divisions threatening the fledgling church's survival. One of the divisions arose around spiritual gifts, which Paul's praise of love is in response to. We heard last week from 1 Corinthians, Paul addressed spiritual gifts. Some of these included acting as apostles, teachers, healers. Spiritual gifts are very much akin what we would describe as ministries within the church today. Unfortunately, divisions began to form around these gifts as to which gifts were better, of more value or influence. Members of the church had begun touting their gifts as above those of others. We heard Paul last week try and lead the community to see that through their diverse and many gifts, Comes unity. For not only do spiritual gifts proceed from the same place, but they are all needed and fit together as equal parts which build the body of Christ, the church. He then relates this beautiful passage for us on love, showing the people that in the end, if they do not treat one another with love, show and live love. Their spiritual gifts are no more than a noisy gong, hollow, empty. In today's church and world, we too must remember that all of our ministries are important, but without love in our hearts, love through our ministries, they too are empty. One scholar writes, without love, it does not matter what budgets, buildings, or missional strategies we have. Such things do not give the church the shape that God desires. In our pursuit of these otherwise glorious spiritual gifts, ministries of our church, we must not forget that the church is called to be a community that practices love in the name of Jesus Christ first and foremost. This may sound cliche, and hackneyed and obvious. But it is important to hear this, for so often the love that Paul urges us to have is not so easy. It is, in fact, very, very difficult. This is why it is important to be reminded of how precious and wonderful the gift of love is, and how through love we can truly change the world. We continue to witness the beginnings of Jesus' public ministry in Luke's gospel. Our gospel passage opens today where we left off last week with Jesus preaching to the people in his hometown of Nazareth in the synagogue. The message Jesus preaches is the love which Paul called on the Corinthians to show. A message that almost leads to Jesus' murder today. And a message he comes back to again and again throughout his ministry, eventually leading him to the cross, as his teachings seem at times so otherworldly 
and they're contrary to society's values. We heard last week Jesus preach from Isaiah that he has come to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. People rejoice and celebrate this tremendous news. The people, especially those in Nazareth, were overjoyed as they have already heard of Jesus performing incredible acts and now await him doing even greater things for them as he has returned home to his own family and community. Jesus then reminds them, though, delving into scripture, that they must hold fast to the belief that all are equal members of God's gifts, including those whom we don't like, those whom we don't trust, those whom we may even fear, those who we judge at times to be less worthy than ourselves, those who are the outcasts of society. Townspeople felt being Jesus' hometown, they should be first in line to receive the gifts of his ministry, and more than that, the best gifts of his ministry. To hear that foreigners, perhaps even Gentiles, might come before them sends them into an absolute rage to the point that they literally attempt to murder Jesus. We should be frightened that this is what happened when Jesus preached a message of tolerance, acceptance, of community, of fellowship, of love. But we should also be excited for this is his message. The love that Jesus calls on us to show the love Paul calls on the Corinthians to show one another is by no means easy. It at times stands against what is popular, accepted, established. I feel today we find this to be especially true, true and real when Jesus calls on us to love our enemies, to have mercy on those who persecute us. Like with the townspeople of Nazareth, these parts of Jesus' ministry can be very hard to hear and even harder to follow. Some of these passages from our gospel and the epistle share is that we find a community dealing with division, division between the people of Nazareth and other communities, whether it be other Jewish communities or those of the Gentiles, and divisions between the Corinthians. And this division has led to suffering. And in each case, Jesus and Paul call on these communities to show forth love in kindness, tolerance, acceptance. I find it striking at times that Paul's great praise of love is not given to a community experiencing harmony and togetherness, but to the Corinthians a community experiencing deep, deep division. There's another community experiencing deep, deep divisions. And that is the community of the United States of America. Not just on a national scale either. There are our own circles, families, friends. Paul closes his second letter to the Corinthians, imploring them to be in agreement with each other. This is not a plea from Paul to be in agreement over all aspects and intricacies and practices and values of daily life. But I believe it is a plea to approach all aspects and intricacies and practices and values in daily life in accordance with this overarching value, which is patient and kind. 
which is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It is love, and love never ends. It is through love that we can overcome suffering. It is through love that we can overcome division. It is through love, as Jesus and Paul teaches us we can bring healing. Marriage is not always an easy thing. Relationships are not always easy. But if we live and act with the qualities of love that Jesus and Paul speak of today, we can rest assured we are living faithful lives in our relationships. Let us be the continuation of love in this world, here and now, bringing love to all we encounter and in all that we believe, and let it fix in us all of its wondrous qualities we hear about today, which will cause us to shine forth, being the light Jesus calls on us. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. Turn to page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people this morning are according to form three, which I think begin on page 387 or around there. I forgot to write it down. Prayers of the people, form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray for the soul of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, 
There will be a memorial service celebrating his life and witness this Wednesday at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul. The service will be both in person and through Zoom at six o'clock in the evening. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise, your, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James, Mary, Sylvia, Brian, Lily, Penelope, James, Dick, Maureen, Valori, Effie, Jim, Jane, Helen, Barbara, Todd, Carol, Diana, Sandy, Betty, Julie, Kimberly, Rip, Jacob, Larry, Anna, Steve, Liesel, Bill, and Charlotte. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of all saints. Ray, Leanne, Annie D, Oba, Sarah, Janice and Tiffany, Dennis and his family, James, for the kids in Glendora, Mississippi, Rick, Tina, Tina's mom, Patrick, Diane, Judy and Tim, John, Marcus, Martha, Hope, Cash and family, for Kristen, Barbara, Grove, Kevin and Paula, Herb and Pamela, Harry, Della, Jubilee, Helen, Bonnie, Atika's sister, Malika, and her brother, Nicholas's grandfather, Ray, and for Sally, Christine, and Betsy. We pray for places where COVID-19 is surging. We pray for those affected and recovering from winter storm Keenan. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray that the situation will be able to be resolved peacefully. I invite your own prayers. We give thanks for the families from Afghanistan settling in our area and country. I invite your own thanksgivings. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor using the form on page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may, may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.